Hey guys, uh, I'm Matt Rickard from Google. I work on pretty much anything open source containers at Google, so obviously a lot of Kubernetes stuff now. Um, but you know, all parts of the container pipeline from you know building, deploying, uh, security scanning, all that sort of stuff. Um, so the whole container story. Um, I mean, most recently I've been working on this tool called Scaffold, uh, and I'll, I'll explain that a little little more. But uh, before that, I worked on Minikube, if you guys are familiar with that. Um, I helped start that at, at Google, uh, and uh, some other kind of Kubernetes uh, tooling. Uh, so what is Scaffold? Uh, well, I guess before that, um, I thought the, the panel today was, was great because it brought up a lot of the pain points that we're trying to solve. <laughs> um, you know, the developer experience on Kubernetes is not great. Um, you know, the developer tooling is not great. Um, and at Google, we realize that, and we're starting to invest a lot in that space. Um, you know, Scaffold's just one example of that, um, and there's other stuff that we've we've done in the community. Uh, Scaffold's not GCP specific; it's not GKE specific. Um, it works on all clusters. I'll I'll kind of show that later. Um, but it's it's aiming to um, to really speed up that inner development workflow of uh, build and deploy, uh, and so. Let me show you. Uh, so we have, we just revamped the documentation. Uh, it, it's pretty cool. We're using ASCII Doctor for this. Um, but the idea is that um, there's really no dependencies. You just, you have your kube control pointed to a cluster, and then you write the scaffold YAML, um, which tells your application how to uh, to build and deploy on Kubernetes. Um, and those builders and deployers are very pluggable. So. In the most basic case of the builder, it's just a Docker build, um, but we support um, you know, non-Docker file Docker builds, um, such as Bazel. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, the Bazel tool. Um, on cluster builds, um, we, uh, our team released a tool called Canico um, to do uh, on cluster builds without um, using the, the privilege flag uh, for the Docker daemon. Um, and then for deploy, it's also kind of unopinionated. We support Helm, we support uh, this new tool called Customize by the community um, that approaches it in a, a bit of a different way, um, and also just kind of regular old uh, Kubernetes manifests. Um, so I guess let, let me just, uh, this is you know very interactive, so if you guys got questions, just shout them out. Um, I'm just going to run through a bunch of demos and, and show you how you'd use it. So. For, for setting up your development environment, um, I just got Docker for Mac here. Um, I'm on the Edge version. I'm using uh, the Kubernetes support in it. Um, obviously, you can use Minikube. Um, I'm just showing that it doesn't matter. I don't care what you use. Uh, if you need to customize things a little more, Minikube's great because it's completely open source. It's, you, know, you can customize it. You can run it with different VM images. You can run it with uh, different runtimes other than Docker. Um, but for simplicity, I'm just using Docker for desktop here. Um, this is the, the scaffold repository. So I'm in the getting started. Um, I just have this single file hello world go uh, program. Uh, I am running it in a pod. And I got a, 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 a simple kind of Docker file here that, that just builds it in, in a multi-stage uh, way. Um, so there's really no kind of magic going on here. Um, Scaffold doesn't actually, you know, provide any Docker Docker files or build packs for you. Um, you know, there are a lot of great tools that do that, and you can kind of generate those files and then just bring them to Scaffold if you want. Um, so there's no real opinion there. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to uh, let me show you the Scaffold demo a little bit and explain what's going on here. This is uh, the kind of relevant part. Um, basically, the, the two big parts are the build uh, stanza and the deploy stanza. Um, so build is just saying, what am I building? Um, how am I building it? It defaults to the, the kind of um, basic Docker file way, but the other examples show you how you can build it in different ways. And then the deploy is just saying, how am I actually going to take those artifacts and deploy them? Here, we're just saying, we're going to deploy any Kubernetes manifest with this prefix. Um, and that's just this one. So there's two kind of modes for scaffold. Um, 
So scaffold uh, run just runs this build deploy, deploy pipeline once um, and then exits. So the idea is that that's a step in your Jenkins pipeline. It's a step in your Spinnaker pipeline, whatever. It's, it's the same kind of experience, but kind of once through. Um, and then scaffold dev is a nice mode where we actually do some introspection on your artifacts. So in the Docker case, we, we look at the Docker file, see what the actual source code dependencies are, and then put a file system watch on that so that we'll automatically do the, the build and deploy in kind of a smart loop when those files change so you don't have to keep on going back and forth and, and context switch. Um, so I'll just do a scaffold dev here. Um, oops, I'm not in the examples folder. Getting started. So what this is, is going to do is it builds my, my image, um, and then it's actually going to deploy it to my cluster. Let's see if I'm pointed to the, the right cluster here. Yeah. So you can see that it, it found all of the, the artifacts that uh, I'm deploying, and it's starting to stream those logs. Um, this program is just printing hello world every second. So if I say hello everyone here, and I save the file, that'll kick off the, the build and deploy pipeline again. And I'll be able to see those changes in a second. So you can see that this has rebuilt the container and redeployed um, with the new image um, and started streaming those logs. So this is the kind of very basic example. Um, you know, are your programs really going to look like this? Uh, not really. Um, but you can do a control C to, to kind of clean up your artifacts, and, and we're left with kind of nothing on the cluster. Um, the nice thing here is that I could do. Um, let me just do it through the UI, maybe it's a little easier. I'm just going to change my context to GKE. So this is a remote cluster now. So that was, my, that was on my laptop that I was doing this build deploy cycle. Now I've switched to a remote cluster, and I can do the same scaffold dev um, here. And this will do the same pipeline, but it will um, actually push the image and deploy it to my remote uh, GKE cluster, which has, uh, has three nodes on it. So. I could show you the, the dashboard here. Um, you can see that it's streaming logs. This is it running kind of in the cloud. Um, and I can, I can still do that kind of, uh, it'll do the rebuild. And I can still do that, uh, that the same kind of workflow, but on a remote cluster. So we're, we're not opinionated of you know, what kind of cluster you're using. Obviously, it's, it's faster locally because we don't have to do that push. Um, and we can, we can reuse a lot of the, um, we can do a lot of caching and stuff. Um, so that's the, the kind of basic example of how it works. Um, you know, in, in the real world, um, obviously, you're not just developing on one service. You know, there's microservices. Um, you know, they might be in different repositories. They might be in different subfolders, whatever. Um, but you, you might be needing to develop on these services kind of at the same time. So we have another um, example here, which is the, the kind of microservice ex example. Um, and it has two kind of components. It has Leroy Web, which is just a, a web server that's going to call to this app server um, and then get uh, some message and then return it to the user. Um, so let me switch back to my local cluster here. And what I'll do is I'll just, so let's see what we, we have in here. Um, the Docker file is about the same. Um, the, uh, the web server is just saying, hey, talk to Leroy app over Kubernetes DNS um, uh, on the, the port that ex is exposed and get that message for us. Um, Leroy app is just saying app server. And the scaffold YAML looks also pretty simple. In this case, we're deploying multiple images. We're building and deploying multiple images, um, which is really nice. Uh, so so if I just do a scaffold dev here, um, this will build and deploy both of them. Scaffold's smart enough to know what artifacts it needs to rebuild and redeploy. Um, and it's also smart enough to know that if you change some of the Kubernetes manifest or whatever the, de uh, the deploy dependencies are, it won't actually do the rebuild of those containers. Um, and we're doing a lot of work to, to kind of solve the case with, 
with static files where your container doesn't actually need to be rebuilt, um, where we can do kind of a sync of you know, HTML files, static files, um, workflows for interpreted languages where you're actually not compiling a binary. Um, so you can see that we have uh, the app server and the web server up. Um, let's see what we have in kube control. Oops. Pod. So you can see both of these are up. Um, we have two services here. We have uh, the app server is not kind of exposed, um, but the, the web server is. So we can do a curl here. Um, and it says Leroy app server. Um, and now if we go and we change that app server to say um, hello world and do a save here, we can see that our scaffold dev have, has picked up those changes, done a re, uh, rebuild of only that one container, and done a redeploy of only the, the app server. Um, so if we go and we, we hit that endpoint again, uh, let's see. So you can see that it says hello world. So the idea is that kind of before the world of Kubernetes and the world of containers, um, you know, you build your, your binary, you stand it up on localhost, you hit it, you attach your debugger, you have your workflow there. Um, with containers and Kubernetes, that's, it's not as easy. Um, you know, there's extra steps. You need to build your, build your binary, put it in a container, um, you know, template or somehow change your Kubernetes manifest to, to look at those new images um, and then redeploy to your cluster. Um, and that's a lot of boilerplate. It's not, it's not the hardest thing to do, um, but you do it every time and Scaffold can kind of really take that and condense it and, and give you that experience that, that you had before almost. Um, so that was the microservice ex is example. Um, what else can I do? Uh, I added uh, this <laughs> the other day, uh, but I think it's, it's kind of a, a, a cool idea. Um, someone mentioned Docker Compose on, on being one end of the spectrum um, and Helm being on the other. Uh, we support Helm <laughs> as a deployer, but um, I added support for um, Docker Compose. So the idea is that we can take a Docker Compose file um, and we can actually use that instead of a scaffold YAML. So you say, Hey, you know, I got a compose file. I've worked with Docker before. I want to try out Kubernetes. Um, but, you know, I don't want to be writing more YAML. I don't really know how to write Kubernetes deployment objects yet. Um, you know, I just want to see what this would look like. Um, so the idea is that there's a lot of tools that have done a mapping um, between compose files and Kubernetes API objects. Um, so Docker for Desktop actually has an API extension server that will do this for you. Um, they call it a stack, I believe. Um, there's another open source tool by the Kubernetes community called Compose with a K um, that will do this. Uh, and that's kind of what we're using. We're using some of that machinery here. Um, so the idea is that this is a Compose file. And um, the app is just about the same. It's uh, the, the same kind of Hello World file. Um, and let's see what we'll do here. All right, let me clean this up. Um, if I go to compose, you have to specify the Docker compose file here. And we do, uh, we figure out that it's a compose file, not a scaffold file. Um, so the idea is that there's no scaffold YAML here. Um, you know, we can, we can spit out a scaffold YAML if you want, but um, you're just running this on a uh, compose file, which is really nice. And then you have the same kind of workflow although you're, you're on Kubernetes now and uh, you're in the kind of cloud native world. Um, and the idea is you probably don't want to be, um, you know, running straight from compose files in your CI systems. Um, so, you know, maybe at some point convert to a scaffold YAML, um, but the idea is that there, there are bridges that exist uh, between these tools. Um, what else can I show you guys? Uh, Scaffold is a great local development tool, um, but we also kind of target the power users, too. Um, so you say, oh, this is great, uh, but I don't really want to be building my image locally and then using that in my CI system or as part of my actual deploy. Um, so we support uh, Canico, which is something that I also worked on. It's an open source tool um, by Google that does on-cluster Kubernetes builds. 
Um, so the idea is that this actually launches a job on your cluster to do the build. Um, and you don't need any extra privileges or anything like that. Um, so the idea is that this is, uh, it, it's not only a local development tool, but it's something that is, is maybe a little more powerful than that and supports kind of higher level tools. Um, there is support for Scaffold and Jenkins X. Um, so I think someone was asking about that earlier. Um, Jenkins X uses Scaffold. Um, to do some of the builds and deploys, uh, and it spits out a scaffold YAML for you. So we work really closely with those guys um, to kind of create a nice uh, CI CD story for everyone. Um, yeah, there's a few more examples here. There's, a, there's a, an example with Helm deployment. We're not super opinionated on what you deploy with. Um, we, we support everything, uh, but the idea is that we, we'd like to push people um, to, to writing higher level um, abstractions around Kubernetes API objects, um, you know, whether that's charts or customized files. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with customized, but customized is a tool that instead of uh, templating your YAML, it actually applies YAML overlays. Um, so you know, this existed for, for basically every other configuration language before XML and JSON, um, but the idea is that you, you specify um, a customization YAML, so great, yeah, more YAML. Uh, but you, this is your, your kind of normal Kubernetes API object. It's a deployment, um, although it says, hey, you know, it's not a valid image. Um, but you specify a patch that actually patches that YAML. So it'll say, hey, um, you specify uh, uh, another YAML that gets kind of applied uh, to your, your base YAML, and it uses the same machinery from uh, kube control apply for the, the merge strategies. Um, so right now, that's in the, the Kubernetes uh, special interest group um, uh, CLI, uh, but uh, Scaffold supports that also. Um, so yeah, anything, uh, I mean, I guess questions, uh, you know, anything else you guys like to see? There's a lot more demos, but um, I guess I open up for questions. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Um, so I was um, looking at the code you put up there, the, the main uh, .go, that file. Uh, did you bake that into the image? Oh, sorry. Did uh, Scaffold bake that into the image when it's creating the Docker image? Um, so uh, there's a Docker file. Uh, that, that does that. Uh, Scaffold doesn't do uh, any uh, build packs or anything like that. So this is not baked in. You provide the, the Docker file here. Um. Um, so I, I, sorry, I was trying to see the point where you uh, uh, maybe I couldn't see it very clearly. Oh, yeah, you, you do have like an add or like run, right? Copy. Okay, I see that. Yeah. Um, so for now, I have a question. So this is also uh, my company's going through because uh, if we go this way of baking the code into the image and then, then run it on scaffold or some other uh, maybe like Jenkins X or get pushed uh, there's no way for us to test the image and also the code um, that gives us a problem because um, sometimes we build a new Docker image without specifying the uh, release version for like one library it breaks all the compatibility so I was wondering if you guys have thought about that, like maybe plan to incorporate that to Scaffold. Yeah, so um, I guess there's, there's two ways that you could approach that. Um, uh, one, if you're, you're still kind of bent on using the Docker file, um, you, can, you can set up some sort of uh, Git pipeline like the, the Git cube uh, people showed uh, where you have some sort of trigger that um, does a scaffold run from version control. So uh, scaffold has the idea of kind of taggers. Um, so we can get some information from Git and tag that image with the commit shot or, or something like that. So you can, you can trace uh, the, the image back to the code um, so that you know that this, this image was built exactly with the repository at this point in time. So that's kind of one way to know what, where, where the code came from and what was copied in. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, Docker files are not uh, super reproducible, right? Um, if you're doing an apt get or something like that, you're not guaranteed to, to get the same result. Um, and, and most likely you won't. 
um, if, if multiple people run it. Um, so the idea there is to, uh, to kind of use alternative representations of how to build your image. Um, so we have support for, for these, uh, these Kubernetes basal, or their container basal rules. So instead of um, specifying a Docker file, you're actually um, specifying these, uh, these Bazel rules. And if you're not familiar with Bazel, it's, it's the open source build system um, by Google. Um, it's based on the one that we use internally. And this is how we build uh, images internally. Um, it's completely reproducible. You don't get the nice things like uh, Docker run. Um, you can't just run arbitrary bash uh, commands. Uh, but you get reproducibility, and um, it's, they are incremental. So for really large apps and really large Docker files, um, uh, they're, they're uh, kind of significantly quicker. Um, you know, I think there'll be, I mean, our team's doing a lot of work um, for kind of alternative ways to, to build your image um, without a Docker file. Um, so we're working with a lot of the folks um, from Docker on uh, the build kit stuff, um, which is uh, another project that kind of tries to abstract a lot of the build machinery away from the, the front end implementations like the Docker file. So that's a very long answer to <laughs> your question. Um. OK, well, we're going to have to keep this really quick. So we'll take both of your questions, but uh, we've got to keep these answers short. OK? <laughs> Sorry. Here you go. The answer to my question would be just yes or no. Uh, <laughs> can you flip the chart we had uh, behind this, uh, the diagram for the remote deployment? Uh, could you repeat that? that OK, this is good. The question is, the remote deployment, does it work only with Google, Compute, uh, with Google Cloud, or it works with anything? It works with anything. Anything that Kube Control can point to, it works with. So AWS, whatever. Okay, yeah, my question is, uh, is it purely for development, and then you add your production configuration setup? Yeah, so. Um, no, it's not only for development. Uh, we, we support different profiles. So if you say, hey, I want to build locally um, you know, with the main profile, but I want to build kind of remotely on my hosted build service with another, um, you can specify the, a scaffold YAML. And the nice thing is that you don't have to rewrite all of this kind of build and deploy boilerplate in your, your CI system. OK, so you would use the scaffold YAML file as your actual deployment method. Exactly, yeah. And so, I mean, we use that for scaffold um, uh, on releases uh, and every commit um, to push our images and, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, with that, we should wrap it up. So, thank you very much, Matt.